China hasn't been able to showcase that they're going to be strong enough to be able to win a TI. And it all starts with bringing down the Liquids Gaming Gladiators quest. Like, you got to be able to, to knock down one of them. And the one who is in your way right now is Team Liquid, and they're going to keep the faith in their Primal Beast for nothing to say, Avery. I don't blame them. Uh, this hero is very good for how they draft because the rest of their heroes are pretty damn greedy. So, like, if you would have picked these four heroes for LG, what else are you going to pick mid outside of Primal that can pick up the slack in terms of not needing a lot of farm to get a lot done? The problem is, like the panel was mentioning, the Phoenix and the Silencer are not very fast at playing around the Primal, and they're pretty bad on the map versus the TB and the Lycan Illusions with the Lashrak who can push down some towers. So I'm concerned. I think Liquid have... I don't want to say full tempo control this game because Brood can do weird things, but... If they ever the get in a position where they're pushing Roshan early with a fast time of the Overlord on Zai, which he should have here, because I oh. think shut down, they're in a very solid position to end this game. And yeah, four runes. Four bounty runes for Liquid. They outclicked all of them, and they might get first blood. An absolute disaster here for LGD before the game even starts, and that is not what their lineup wants to do, because as I was saying, Helm of the Overlord Lycan should give you Roche at 15, 16 minutes for Liquid in an ideal scenario, and you're going high ground at like 20, 25. Yeah. That is what the Terrorblade pick does. This Terrorblade pick is not, I'm going to win late game with Terrorblade, because it does not win late game here. What the Terrorblade pick does is it takes the Aegis, and it hits your high ground at like very early in the game compared to a lot of other carries. Especially with Lycan to back it up, you have Undyne for Tombstone Vision on the high ground plus Sustain, and a Lashrak who can be really tanky with Bass Bloodstone plus one and help you with some Edict damage. That is what Liquid are looking for in this game, and I expect them to hit it pretty hard here, especially considering they are basically already winning three lanes. This is a little rough, because not only did you get all four Bounding Runes, but you also killed the enemy ward, so Nisha is way ahead of nothing to say already, and I think you've pretty much heavily outlined nothing to say his performance and how integral it's going to be to stopping the early game of Liquid. I mean, he is LG's early game here. Like, yeah, there's the there's nothing else. <laughs> they have a Phoenix with zero stuns. They have a Silencer versus Wolves. This matchup's absolutely terrible. It's like borderline unplayable for most of the game. Yeah. There's not even much to combo global off of because, again, they don't have too many stuns. And then it's just a Fanal Answer Brood who need to farm. They're going to be scary later, but for the first 20 minutes, wet pool noodle status, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot that LG are going to have to make up here. Liquid, somewhere their coach is laughing right now. One start would definitely be winning this side lane. I'm not sure if Brood can do that, though. I mean, Phoenix is all right against Undying in lane. Ranged hero has the attack speed slow against the heavy right clicks of the Undying. But uh, at least when the Terror Blade is metamorphosed, there's nothing you could really do. They also just have straight level advantage up here a little bit. And Mickey making the most out of this level one meta. I, I do expect the, this lane to go better for LGD over the long term. Like Brood Phoenix scaling into this TB Undying should be very good. At some point, Mickey will probably leave. It's just, are you going to get damage done during that period? And what's going to happen if elsewhere on the map? El Planet going in. Yeah, he did. Dove in, and Mickey almost hey. dead, and he will manage to get that first blood. In fact, Planet is going to help deal with the Tombstone. Never mind. In fact, Mew, I think he's going to be run yeah, down here. Meanwhile, they killed. Nothing to say. Yeah, Insania did get that double kill off the Tombstone. So, yeah, I guess you got the first blood, but blood in the water all over the place in these other lanes. This is definitely worth the LGD up here to get the XP and the gold on Brood, take Mickey out of the lane, but... What happened mid is not good at all, as Nisha is already snowballing this game, taking advantage of the matchup counterpick to the Primal, the disadvantage of picking it early for LGD. And once again, NTS is just left out to dry, man. I, I don't know who can help him here. His matchup is not an easy one. He's getting ganked. He still has to pick up the early game for LGD. It's too much on his back. The responsibility, God. There's too much responsibility. Yeah, seriously. They gotta be able to help him out a little bit more. If he gets charged, what's he gonna do? Ask for a silencer TP? I don't. I think it's even worse if you ask for it. <laughs> Just accept your fate. They're gonna rotate wide top through the gate. It did get scanned, so Mickey, Mickey again. 
I think he's dead again, though. Yeah, it's, uh... They're doing a nice they job to be able to run him down. Dive, plus a little bit more okay. at a stick, but Mickey actually is able to turn around with Insania, and they get the kill. Insania already on a killing spree. Uh, that's just a super heads up play by Liquid. They called the gate move, maybe off a of Wolf Scout, they scanned it, and then Mickey knows to run down instead of up. Ends up getting the turnaround kill instead of the game for Y, which has been generally successful for LG, and now Y is dead. Yeah, run down underneath the tower. Planet's going to be back in a play here, but I don't think he has Fire Spirits out, but he does have a Blood Grenade, though, and the Blood Grenade does help to get the kill. Mew is going to be a little bit low. Stick Charges will keep him over the line, though, and he'll try and heal back up here. He's only level 1 Insatiable, but it should keep him in lane, and LG doing their best to fight around the one hero they can fight around the Brood here. Not a hero you necessarily want to fight around with this many heroes this early as you sap some of the XP. There's just nowhere else to go. I guess upside is Shiro gets some solo time, but the solo time is not great down here versus Lycan who just punches you back. All these lanes, small pressure points Liquid are taking advantage of, and the extra Spear Breaker Roam, a hero that can really pick, quickly pick up the pace. Already back to Shiro bottom. Oh, you left him alone? Lots of damage. I'll take advantage of that. Shiro doppelgangers, they found the real one. Did or they, they find the real they one? They did, Boxy. Second guessing himself, does manage to get Ooh, caught nice by stuff. nothing to say. Who's gonna go for the double here? If he can get it, fantastic. Well worth his uh, time, but sadly a TP away from Zai, or a fake TP, will get nothing to say off of him. That's still worth, because he's actually saved Shiro too. Those wolves are gonna kill him if that charge doesn't come through. In fact, they're still biting him here. He's in trouble. Is he dead? Turns around, he fights the wolves, almost dies. Yeah, Shiro's in a world of his own hurt down here. I don't think this charge will be able to connect in time. No. But your towers are taking a beating while all this map movement's happening. Why has to go mid to try and salvage that? Very fast tempo here from Liquid. They're going to be all over the place. The wolves are going to help. They're going to give the vision, connect with the charges, drop the tombstones for these fights. You're going to start forcing LGD off these lanes outside of the brood one. Trying to get have to nothing to say here. Just picked up his phase boots. Will be able to jump away before charge can hit him. Still not level six. No, and is. He's just looking for the bottom gank because they know Shiro TP back here. This is a beautiful read. Pretty much a guaranteed Phantom Lancer kill. Yeah, no way he can really get away from this unless he manages to juke them out with an illusion. That was pretty good. Yeah, the splitter, the TP's coming in. Unfortunately, the bash, and just again, the damage. You cannot get away from this Lush Rack. And triple teleport just to watch their carry die. I mean, they do have level six on nothing to say, so he can grab something here. Nisha is going to be able to turn around with Split Earth, though. Nothing to say, charges through Boxy, gets the kill, and looks to get out. I mean, why is dead to the wolf? This isn't even level six for Zai. Oh, yeah, completely body blocking a man, planet. He's probably going to die, too. Nisha will be given the mana, thanks to Insania having arcane boots already off of Very the nice early people. kills in lane. All these little snowball things going Liquid's way, getting early utility items, boosting up their cores on the map. Radiant's Wisdom Rune is picked up by Shiro, barely ahead of that illusion, which was heading to deny it. So he salvages that a little bit for LGD, but man, this is going to be a slow game from them if they ever recover it. And it's, it's coming all down to the Brood and the Primal here. How much can they stem the bleeding, defend their towers? That's why the mass TPs are coming out for LG. They don't want to give up early tier ones versus like and Terrorblade lineup. Yeah. With a Spear Breaker can charge you on the map, that's just a death sentence, right? Like, the second Liquid have more space than you to operate. They need a kill like it is. Off. Real badly. Stop Mickey from getting his level good six. One. Good execution. Yeah, the gate ganks has been something that has worked for LGD very well. Yes. Uh, something they have abused more than almost any other team. Yeah, well, you're talking about in game one how the Western European teams play a lot around mid. China has been mostly gate, gate, gate. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Well, that's because they created a gate from the east to the west, and Sumail took it. That's true. <laughs> Gates are wide open, Cap. I'm waiting for the yep. Chinese player to come to NA and revive the region. It's an open door policy. I'm just saying, faith beyond you. There's an invitation. Of course, anytime, any team. Anytime, anytime you want to come to NA and, and form Team Dog 2 with... <laughs> Please. <laughs> I got some boys waiting. <laughs> Would you, if, if Faith Beyond came to you and said, Avery, you're the most brilliant captain I've ever met. You assume that hasn't happened.
Please, can we please form a Dota team? Would you come out of retirement? I'm just saying you better you better have Kyle on your speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need a new casting part. <laughs> Planet will pay the price here to a charge. The Wolves have done some work this game. As I has not even needed to use his ult, has made his impact felt. Honestly, the numbers don't look too bad for LGD though. I feel like this game has just been all liquid, but yeah, considering how they're getting they run over, found something. Yeah, I guess it's like the brood parody. That's the thing. Like the brood is, it's a good brood game. I don't think they have much to interact with them outside of Spear Breaker charges later with heroes with enough farm to kill him, but. Otherwise, Mew should be pretty free, and Mickey, he has three deaths, right? It's not been that great a game for the Terrorblade, as much as we were talking about the Phantom Lancer. I mean, they're basically tied at the bottom here. Yeah. So this game is, there's a lot of parity in this game. LG's not too far behind, and they kept their mid-tower high HP, which was really important. If that mid-tower had gone down earlier to, like, some extra edicts or just Liquid bringing heroes, dropping Tombstone, whatever, I think the map looks very tough for LG to play. But now they have this to play around. It's a decent position to hold and take a defensive fight with support ults if you can get there before the wolf starts knocking. Yeah, and that, that is the problem, right? And that's the big difference between all these heroes. The support levels and gold difference is massive. Planet, he's got one dive to try and get out of here. And the charge is going to come through, hits him, can't quite kill him. Boxy actually didn't go for that one hit. He'll let Zai come back and try and get it, but no, they, he doesn't want to die in tier two. A little bit too dicey. They got the helm creep out of that as well. Zai creates another helm creep off a of flag there. To run around a bit, but that's a wasted Lycan ult. Did not get much done for Liquid. Space for the Brood, space for the Phantom Lancer who moved his way top, and some extra gold for NTS. So this is pretty much what LG want. They want to just react to Liquid's moves, try and get as much out of them as they can. Well, their other cores continue to farm up. Well, they force a rotation bottom and then they immediately take Yeah, this is so. the downside. Your mid tower pays the price eventually. I think that is a tower LG would have liked to have gotten a full team fight out of, but they just didn't have the support ults to take it, as they are still lacking level six on both. Nikkei, I don't, I don't know if you want to be up here, man. Then where else does he go? Go bottom. I feel like there's, uh, they've created a fair amount of space, a lot of jungle area to take over there. Oh, it's easy for you to say you're not in the game. <laughs> yeah, well, that, you know, the commentators... Uh, you're not playing on Team Liquid, where every three seconds, Nisha yells, My camp! <laughs> <laughs> mine! Mine! <laughs> I'm the best player in the world, not you, Mickey. Smoke up on two, Insani and Mickey. Mickey, that Her voice line was about me. You remember that, <laughs> kid. <laughs> I don't think I'm the best player, but I'm better than you. <laughs> Neo is going to be run into here, but uh, as you said, without the Spirit Breaker, they don't really have a way to connect and follow up on the Broodmother. No, he's actually pretty tanky for them to just go on unless they can get the Lesh on top of him. I mean, they're, they're just walking at him. They do have the charge now, but he's kind of far away. Extra Bash doesn't hurt. Oh, the Extra okay. Bash plus the ultimate will get him in range. I mean, they smoke a lot of heroes up here. That's the Lesh they need for the kill. That's a good find for Liquid. Might cost him on the other side. Uh oh. They have yeah, three, right? Boxy yeah, yeah. too greedy on that rune. LGD get a small punish, but that's definitely very favorable for Liquid as they're just farming everything up. And yeah, these supports are are just cruising. Even Insania is just killing neutral camps with decay here. Yeah, they got the early arcane boots, they got early phase boots for the spirit breaker. That's the nice thing about this new decay, dealing double to creeps. You can actually farm a lot with this hero, way more than you used to. Part of the reason he went up to that first pick priority. Sure. I don't know. If you, if you give a Dota hero a spell that suddenly does double damage to creeps, I feel like every time it has happened, the heroes become first phase, except Clinks. Yeah, Clinks is still, uh. I, Clinks has been having an identity crisis for quite some time. I still think Valve hates that. I swear, like, there was one guy who designed Clinks and Valve, and they hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so forever, they just curse the hero. Why would they hate that guy? Maybe they hated the voice actor who voiced him. They're like, you know what? Your hero's just never going to see play. Yeah, maybe. Then, yeah, then, then what inner, did... Inner then, let let me ask you, what did OD do? You talking about OD Pixel? <laughs> <laughs> no, Outworld, no. I, Outworld. I think, Valve, I think Valve likes him. Dumpster can? Yeah. 
I honestly think Valve is just confused with that one. I don't think, yeah. I don't think they hate Odie. I think they just don't know what he's supposed to do. I mean, if Clint I don't think anybody has, knows if does have an identity crisis, uh, Odie okay. lost his identity. Name me what Odie's passive does right now. <laughs> I don't. You can't. Fucking nobody know. in the world can. You know why? Because I don't. Nobody knows what Zero's supposed to do. Is he stealing mana? Is he amping mana? Is he supposed to have a lot of mana? Are you supposed to have a lot? Are you supposed to have a little? Is it an in intelligence thing? Like, is he a universal? He maybe he could have. Been. Are you supposed to buy eight toes? Or are you supposed to buy eggs? Is he a save? Is he an aggressive initiation? Is Mickey dead? Yes, he is. Does he wish he was OD? No, because the hero's terrible. That's why, man. The hero's too damn confusing. Better to be a, a dead TB than an alive OD. Yeah, way better than Centaur for sure. That's the thing, you know. <laughs> there's always somebody lurking out you that's worse. <laughs> there's always someone lower on the totem pole. That's right. As LGD continue to try and keep their status quo in this game, Zai pushing towards that Helm of the Overlord. That is going to be the big timing for Liquid. And it is approaching 15, 16 minutes, which is right where you want it in the sweet spot for that first Roshan. This is where LGD really would like to punish the Lycan. They can line it up. Just so damn hard. He's so tanky. You have a dying behind him. This Bloodstone Lesh is already online. Your tier two is gone. They spot him, but nothing to say. Is actually being hit by the Helm of Dom creep. So I think uh, maybe there would have been a plan there. Okay, let's just blink and try and blow up the Lesh rack. But I do like that LG are going early support items. Like they went earn on planet and fail on Y. I think this is a decent idea. Just amp up the early spell damage, play through NTS, get as much done as you can in the limited windows you're going to have it like Nisha here you got to be able to try and go for this kill they're going to commit everything yeah everything if they brought you in though this is really good because now you can follow up on this committal that otherwise would have been very heavy yeah get the kill on Insania take the tower a lot you can get out of this one that's a nice move by LGD and again the early little items help them have the confidence to go for that play especially blink on NTS sure you with the connection early mech here Looking for mech and a pipe. They're going to have some ores to help their five men as well. And this game is not looking too bad. I think the Overlord timing is still going to be very strong for Liquid. So, like, I'm not looking at these net worths and thinking this game is going well for LGD, but they can keep finding these openings. You got to respect this ultimate because yeah, this your status resistance lot. does nothing to it. That's the problem with Pulverize. BKB and status resistance are both countered by this ultimate. If this is the type of game that LG won out of the Primal Beast, him carrying that three-man hit squad in the early game while the other two heroes find the farm. Right. Because now NTS, he was 0-5 last game. He's 5-1 and this game. That is a very strong difference, especially in terms of how well he's going to scale. How are they doing two. this better? He's top net worth. He is. How are they doing this better with Phoenix Silencer I don't know. Rana Techies? I don't know. I mean, These honestly, are fundamentally you know, worse heroes to work with the Primal Beast, they're, but okay, they're, they're playing better. They're not that bad if you have the levels. Like, Phoenix Silencer is a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. Okay. Well, they didn't have the levels. Not until recently. No. Uh, but I agree, they're making it work way better than the last game with slightly difficult heroes, and it's just about being in the right place with the Once right Once again, hero. the Nether Strike pushes him back into Nisha. That should be Roche. And it's a bad spot to die in. I mean, there's nowhere else New can really play, but that's just a damn good smoke by Liquid. Exactly to the part of the map they want to be in. Helm of the Overlord, done. Right on Q, send the dragon in the pit. Buff Mickey up. And easy Roshan to play with the Aegis on Nisha here for the first one, I would think. I don't think Mickey wants the first one unless he really wants to push high ground early. Yeah, surely you've got a lot of towers still to get through. I feel like high ground is a... Uh bit of a bold assumption. Yeah, I think you're looking at the second Roche for that. Yeah. And so I think you let Mickey just farm. He gives one Nisha. You go play around with him. Maybe another tier two is on the menu. Outpost. Some aggressive jungle control. LGD continue to try and push this to the late game with their farm. They do have the early Ags on Shiro with the Phantom Lancer. So the Phantom Lancer can join these fights. His damage output will be decent. He will probably have Diffusal before the next real big engagement here. What do you think about uh, Lincoln's for... Um nothing to say is Primal Beast. Is new also going to get one? Maybe later on. I mean, you block some of these charges. Liquid don't have another initiation and NTS continues to just pummel people into the dirt. Liquid have not respected this Blink Primal on the mid lane. That is no. for sure. Giving up a lot of freebies here. And a lot of their vision is on the side lane, so they're just not seeing where NTS is going. Shapeshift going to be used to hunt down the supports here. Okay, well, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> 
And uh, Phoenix might be run down as well. It's going to be hard for him to get this far away. Do you egg? Try and disappear into the trees. TP out. Split Earth is going to be there to stop him. LG give up both supports to the Wolf ult. That's probably going to be an inevitable for a lot of this game. There's not much control for the summons just running in. I mean, that is the silencer like in matchup. What can you do? You can buy Ghost Scepter, and then he buys Nullifier, and then what do you do? Yeah. I, I, I was going to say, like, when he was talking, you were talking about the veil. I was like, well, you could get a Ghost Scepter or a Force Staff, but it's really not going to save you against it does a Lightner. He, he'll hunt you down anyway. Yeah, better to just throw everything out there and then sure. yeet yourself into Valhalla. Both teams working towards their auras here. That Lincoln's on NTS, man. That is a... I mean, it feels great versus the Breaker. There's limited to break it here. It's okay versus Sunder later. But the way he's playing, it means that he can't confidently blink. Like if he went BKB, right? Blink, BKB, Pulverize. Nothing stops him. Except Nether Strike. I mean, there's not much stopping him. I don't know if... The one concern I would have with the lack of BKB is like the Lashrak killing you. The BKB is good versus the Lash here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's an interesting item choice. We'll, we'll see if uh, it works out for him in these later fights with blocking the big two spells. It would have made more sense if the Broodmother went that, because the Broodmother is in charge of, like, lane upkeep, right? I just don't think he can really show anyway, but I agree. I, I would have I would have expected if there were a hero to buy Link in this game, it would have been the Brood. He might still get one way later on. I think Mew probably has other plans, though, with this mech into Pipe, into Greaves. It'll probably be Hex after, right? I think that is, like, your default build up here. Sure. And, I mean, the Greaves and the Pipe are going to be good for LGD here. Like, Liquid's damage is not... It's not too burst-oriented. You kind of want the long fight with the Tombstone and the Lesh depleting his whole mana pool. So if you can save the initial go with the Auras here, let's see if it'll save him. He shows himself global. for a second. Pipe, Global Silence going to be used. Now, the Bloodstone was also used on Nisha. But remember, he has that Aegis Nether Strike. Going to bump back the Silencer. They have the Egg. Not going to be able to... Uh, can they protect it, actually? Why you smile does die to the Creeps. And the Egg is going to successfully explode, getting the kill on and Insania. And the Slam, actually, they're able to kill the uh, Aegis on the Lesh Track. He doesn't have Bloodstone one. either, but maybe running out of damage. Shiro, he's trying to salt the back line. They finish up Boxy, trying to stay away from Nisha. Pope at him now they can go back in he's low and they go back in with nothing to say to stop that tp he'll die for it but boy what a great fight for lgd and a great thunder from nikkei but he didn't get it on a hero town. he went through an illusion that means he's got nothing left in the tank except for maybe to kill new but he can't get that a tp away but no the magic damage is there zai tp is away but he's also denied what a fight from lg that is not an easy fight at all but the egg was just in too good of a position it bait Zai a little bit by some time you get two full sun rays off all you lose is silencer at the start in your brood and your phantom lancer have a free fight with that defusal timing for shiro amazing two he, for six exchange yeah that is ages i don't even know how nisha died so fast both times he's just dying to phantom lancer and uh, nts yeah i mean i think the ags went to work there i mean it's really shiro like we're looking at this fight shiro did 7500 damage in this fight yeah it is all phantom lancer getting the ags getting the defusal that is the exact point at which lgd want to take a skirmish and they get it very deep around a tier two it's just too far to go for the egg you're wasting a lot of this wolf form and nts he has a good read of this engagement goes in on the back line i thought the tombstone was going to cause him more problems here because you saw a decent duration on it but LG just kite this fight out really nicely. Now, this is where NTS probably wishes he had BKB. <laughs> sure. But, yeah. hey, he got the job done, and, I mean, you can't blame him. This, this guy goes back in. He knows he knows what his job is. Man, those illusions destroyed Nisha before he could get off, it, before he could do so enough damage, damage to kill them. This matchup is, is not what it used to be, I can assure you. It is not fun, especially if the Phantom Lancer gets to, like, Heart, Mage Slayer territory, whatever. I mean, Solo part, Lash is not going to stop Phantom Lancer's game. Yeah. A big part for me, he used the Bloodstone on his first life. Right? He has the Aegis. You didn't. Yeah, really and it didn't man. connect on anything either. Yeah, yeah. That, also, the vessel was completed for Planet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Again, he rushes this vessel. Early itemization, paying off here for LGD. They just need to win some of these early fights. I think they're going to be way more confident in this game. Lead is back down to zero. If you're Liquid, you really need this next Roche, and you need to get a lot done with it. Yeah. I guess you can scale your Spirit Breaker here. Like, Boxy has found a lot of farm in this game. 
He's killed a lot of spiders, but Nisha, Nisha's dead again. Global Sound, Supernova, they know how important this last strike is to shutting down the Phantom Lancer. And as you said, if the matchup is worse than before and they get these kills on him, Shiro is going to take over this game. This almost feels like a, a shift from last time where Liquid shut down NTS and LGD, they are just shutting down Nisha. Yeah. It wasn't as much focused on the laning phase, but man, have they hurt him in this mid game. A third big death for the Lesh before he gets to that BKB and can deal with the burst. He's under attack. They just, they see him, they commit everything. They know it's guaranteed. It's been a really nice committal from LGD every time, and it will give them a gold lead in this game for the first time at 24 minutes here. Maybe the first time in the entire series. That actually might be true, yeah. That would be a crazy stat, but... This is where this team shines, right? If they can draw these games out and be in an even position at 30 minutes, I feel like they tend to win more of those games than almost any other team. So this is, this is going to be a test for Liquid right here. They still have a decent shot to win this game if they get next Roshan and they can push the advantage with the Terrorblade timings, especially if they can get these BKBs up, because BKBs are very good versus LGD. We cannot underestimate that, right? You're bypassing yeah, yeah. both the support, the primal really sucks when those durations are long. And he's better than he was before, but damage-wise, you should get a good Sunder off. Nisha should live way longer. That window with the Aegis and the Wolf finishing an AC for Zai is going to be really good for Liquid, and I think that is their window to take this game if they want to take it. You go later than that, and it's going to get real spooky real fast because this is not a sixth network. Primal. It is a first two network primal for NTS, and that is a big difference, especially with his matchups this game. Do you think, um, so the timing that they went for that Nisha kill, it actually works out really well, where basically their cooldowns are going to be up around the time Roshan could spawn. Do you think that is a conversation you actually have as LGD? Like, guys, let's go hunt Nisha. We're willing to use these cooldowns because we'll have them back up for a Roshan fight. I think it's hard to think about the exact road timing, but I think they are thinking about it in terms of, hey, if we commit both our support, support ults for a Lashrak kill, one, he's high level, he's going to be dead for half of that cooldown anyway, and Liquid are not going to make a move without the Lesha scheme. Okay. So you're basically like, you know, or what are we looking at? A 60 second downtime? Yeah. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. And they get him back up. Roshan is going to be in two minutes, but both the support ultimates are back up into play for PSG LGD. Liquid didn't really get a whole lot done during that uh, window. No, they're just farming for their next set of items. It was AC for Zai and the BKBs for the other two cores. They're still a ways away from that, though. Nisha almost has his, but Mickey's is going to be a long time, so now the heart is done. Fight without it. No, hearts are done, excuse me, nothing to say, and Shiro's Phantom Lancer. That's a lot of HP out of nowhere. I feel like heart uh, in these sort of lineups is like a tipping item where it's like if you now you have this huge boost of HP. If you get any follow up item after this that increases your survivability, feel like fights are just kind of done. You you just run out of damage a lot of the times. Liquid could run into a damage problem here. That's where it almost falls to Oxy to pick it up a bit. <laughs> like get multiple charges off, land a big ult, you can focus down a target. Yeah. The breaker can do a decent amount of damage. He also has planar pocket here, which might catch pulverize, right? Yeah, redirect pulverize. Again, so, the status resistance wouldn't save you, but still be good. I mean you'd rather take it off of Misha. As he's still looking for this BKB, man, they are far away from liquid. It's felt like forever they're trying to get here. Yeah, I mean, if Roche were up, I actually think LGD would just do it right now. Sure, why not? I mean, you have the Supernova, you could put the egg behind the pit. How does Liquid fight into that? I don't think they do. I think their answer would be just a rat. Because you have to remember, there's Shard up on Lycan, there's Wolves pushing in these lanes, there's the Helm Creep, there's Terrorblade Illusions. Liquid don't have to take a fair fight this game. Sure. Yeah. They can split the map. LGD are pretty bad at reacting to it, honestly, because they don't have mobile heroes, they don't have a bots hero. The Brood does not want to leave the area where the Brood is set up. And the supports can't necessarily shove the lanes too deep because they just die to the summons. Yeah, it seems like nothing to say might need to go back for a Boots of Travel at some point. It would definitely make their lives easier. I just don't know if he can afford it. Yeah. And that is something Liquid can play around. Like, they're chipping this tier 3 bottom. Zai is constantly pushing in. Mickey can push it in. Don't have to take a fair fight. And isn't that the, uh, wasn't that the OG motto? Never take a fair fight. Was that the roller? I feel like that was one of the mantras. 
And the two-time TI winners. I feel like their motto following their idea. I feel like their motto was just good. like, we're gonna win because everybody else is worse. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was their motto. <laughs> they go in a game and it's like best. 40 minutes in and somebody asks, you know, are we gonna win this game? And Seb's just like, yeah, because they're they suck. I was like, oh all right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Now I know that. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna win. We've got the best carry in the world. Yeah, we're just better, guys. I mean, that's a good model to have. We're just better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, 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 that seems to be... Slogan. Well, the uh, quest's motto is apparently, we're just younger. True. Yeah, see? Uh, that's what they were talking about in the interview. Sometimes that stuff goes a long way. It sounds meany, but... You know what? I'll give that slogan to whatever Team Morgan wants it. You know, Shopify, Rebellion, we're just better. They can have it. It's a nice model. We're gonna give up Roshan. Liquid, do not contest this. Um, I'm not even sure if you uh, could say they ratted per se. They took a tier two mid. Yeah, they they did not get nearly as much pressure on this bottom lane as I thought they would. Is I I don't know. That felt like a very dead period for Liquid, and I don't know if they're that good in this ultra late man. Yeah, are we are we missing something? Are they gonna hit some bigger timing than? We're anticipating. I mean, they are farming well. Maybe their idea is that eventually LGD runs out of damage. Because <laughs> you have, like, utility brood, but I don't know if that's true, man. I feel like I have not seen Terrorblades win a lot of these ultra late games. I feel like the Terrorblade pick here was for the timings with the Lycan, especially around the second Roshan. Sure. Yeah. The Breaker can pick up some of it. Zaya is going to start itemizing to help deal with the fan lancer but also i feel like i've watched these broodmothers like if the utility broodmother goes late game it still starts putting out damage oh yeah i mean he's gonna get an ac next he's still gonna be an issue and like i said this primal is very far this is not the kind of sack primal from late game who never got past that heart he is going to get past the heart yeah and you get into this really dangerous territory where you have like bkb lincolns and then you have the 25 talent maybe even both of the 25 His talents are good yeah they're poking Shiro down here. Nice choice there. Last second, Manta to them. Uh, make sure no Nether Strike, and now Boxy's being burned out of all of his mana. Yeah, he's just dying. This is a fight LG can take us. Yeah, no, he's, he's gonna go for it. Lincoln's gonna break. We got the Pulverize onto the last rank. They're gonna start burning through Nisha's mana. They have to hit back up. Eat. Shiro's still committing, though. Shiro's going for it. The Bloodstone Nisha. He no gets mana. the Thunder to be able to help him out, but he's burned out of his mana. They're gonna keep going. The charge on through into the tier threes. Oh, LGD. This is deep, but if you can get it, it's worth it, Nisha. They Pop won't his BKB get it. And they won't get it. And now, PSG LGD, they get out. They for lost free. The silencer on the back to Zai, who wolfed in. And now and he's out of wolf form. Interesting, he did not TP, I think. Yeah, there was nothing to stop him. Yeah, very curious. Maybe he wants to just draw them away, but I don't know. He'll sacrifice his life either way. Does get a support out of it. Forces LG to react to that instead of the other fight. That is a big problem for Nisha. If you don't pop the BKB early, let's say you're just getting poked. You start losing mana to this defusal to your own spells. You don't have mana for BKB later on. Yeah. That is part of the problem in this Phantom Lancer Lashrak matchup. It is not that one-sided for Lashrak anymore. In fact, I feel like Phantom Lancer just beats Lashrak, unless he has help. And he does not have help in clearing the illusions out this game. I mean, Zai is thinking about a Radiance here on a Lycan. That is how desperate they are for a PL solution. Right now, it is all LGD in the fights. They're going to push high ground at 30 minutes. I thought it would have been the other way around. They have really stalled out this game with some key Lashrak pickoffs. And Liquid just not getting as much rat action done as I thought. Yeah, they're trying now with the illusions pushing in mid and bottom, but the real threat is taking your barracks. It's a lane for LGD here in game two. Are they gonna look for two. More. Yeah, why not? They still have a cheese and Aegis up for two minutes here. That's five lives between these three cores, even if both supports are dealing with waves. Liquid here, actually. Anybody gonna show up here? Start mounting a defense now. PSG LGD. See if they get caught. See if they fight back. Just gonna watch them leave. Yeah. It's a sad, sad fate right now. As you, the ones who wanted to be pushing LG, are getting pushed in. And Shiva's done for NTS. He is very tanky. Yeah, that's the item I'm talking about right there. You go for, for a heart, now you have the big attack speed slow plus the armor. You're going to have a hard time cutting down this big boy. And remember, all this push is happening while Y has been sitting on bottom <laughs> as a silencer. I mean, he can commit the global to help, but this is 4v5 for LGD. 
Moxie's gonna get his BKB force. The, the poke is just way too much right now. So <laughs> within it left have the ages. initiation. Shiro's gonna force it. Yeah. Might as well. He's got the extra life. Charge on through. He's gonna hit you. No BKB this time. Yule Scepter gonna stop that bulldoze. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he is dead. Nice Yule's pickup as well here, stopping the breaker. Even more control. What are they? Okay. Uh, finally finish him off here. He has a buyback. Liquid. You still have Aegis here. You're gonna need <laughs> all the resources. Seconds. Yeah, like, you gonna give up this this second lane because of the Aegis? It's looking like it. Hold the buyback. LG playing this cautiously. Oh, oh what a buyback. Wow. wow. Media charge out. Yeah, they want to force the fight when it's expiring. See if he can kill Y. Yule Scepter stops him. They have the global silence to be able to turn around here. Get out the tombstone. PFG LGD trying to get away from that one. The Scotty is slowing him down significantly here, but the Sunray, and they are having a hard time with damage. Nothing to say is not falling easily. Muse putting out the damage. Shiro's going for the backside, finishing off the Undying. Nothing to say is going to be able to skirt on by here. The Supernova is going to be used, and nothing to is say. Is going to live? With the Pulverize, the Supernova, it'll explode. The Egg dies, and, you in and trouble. now PFG LGD are in trouble without yes, that extra geez. bit of life. Shiro is still strong, though. Shiro, that's the hero you got to work out for, and look at him. They get on top of Mickey. Nice yes. Thunder. Mickey gets a a little bit more. Yes. He's going for the kill. He got him. Yes, but he gets the kill. Nothing to say. Kills them both and gets away. Shiro is now going to run down the rest of Liquid. There is nothing left in the tank. And TS never turns his back on a fight. And the reinitiations were beautiful this game as LGD pull it back in game two. Had a very precarious one. Like that felt like it could have gone either way if Liquid went a little bit more away. On doing stuff, having this blink first, they had a lot of pickoffs in the mid lane, which delayed the game for the for the PL to come online. And I don't know, they they killed like four or five heroes there, and they they killed uh, Lestrak, which was very crucial in the mid lane. They killed uh, Boxy multiple times. They killed Insania there, and uh, it just like kept stopping Liquid from just being you know able to gather and and go for the, the objectives in this game.